All right, so we had precision teaching in one minute with Amy Evans, and that's actually been published as an article, and there's a whole lot of advancements that's that's gone into that. So today we have Amy, and let's jump straight into the extended version of this. Hi, okay, so we shared a definition and a list of critical and variable features as fast as I could talk last time we did this. So let me talk you through what we've got. We came up with a set of specific critical features, me and my colleague, Drew Bulla and Andrew Keita, and the six critical features of precision teaching as we see it are accelerating repertoires, meaning that we're focusing on actually accelerating some sort of behavior. So what that means is that cases of using precision teaching or using the standard acceleration chart, but only to decelerate behavior or to look at stuff that isn't behavior, um, those don't count as precision teaching, at least in the way that we set this up. So that's a, a big one because we get to keep the word teaching in the term precision teaching, and it kind of makes sense if we're talking about accelerating repertoire. But remember, precision teaching is more about measurement than it is about the teaching part of it or how you teach. So then we got into dimensional measurement, which you all know if you've read about precision teaching that we're really focused on how we define behavior and what we what measures we use. So frequency, duration, latency, but almost always frequency. Then we use precise behavioral definitions. Those are pinpoints. We use the standard acceleration chart. That's totally key. You absolutely cannot do precision teaching without the SCC uh, guiding you. And then the other two down here are continuous observation, meaning that we measure behavior in real time as opposed to momentary time sampling or other time sampling procedures. And we also added in to just reemphasize that precision teaching is all about database decisions. So without making database decisions, you're not doing precision teaching. And we wanted to make that clear. So using all of the critical features and putting them into our definition, um, that's something I learned from Susan Markle, one of my favorite instructional designers, by the way. She talks about what it takes to have an effective definition. It should hint at all of the critical features or explicitly state all of the critical features. So it's a bit of a long sentence, but this is what we came up for. Precision teaching is a system for precisely defining and continuously measuring dimensional features of behavior and analyzing behavioral data on the SCC to make timely and effective data-based decisions to accelerate behavioral repertoires. So this definition is very similar to the one you heard me say with Ryan years ago. Um, we just updated the language a tiny, tiny bit but I'm feeling pretty good about where we landed on this definition. So one of the reasons that we dove into this project and that I've been interested in doing this for years is just because of some of the things that people are getting from learning about precision teaching. So we see an example of precision teaching that includes learners engaging in, responsi in responses really quickly. And then we think that precision teaching is all about going fast. So ju that's just one example. These are some others of things that people often think precision teaching is that I wanted to really clarify by using the critical features that it is not. Precision teaching is not all about going fast. Precision teaching isn't even all about fluency. It's not only for timings. It's not a way of teaching. Um, and I hope that people will believe that it's not just a cult-like obsession with the standard acceleration chart. In fact, we are obsessed with the standard acceleration chart as precision teachers just because it drives our decision-making and helps us do a better job with our learners, at least from our experience. Um, it's certainly not just an overly complicated data collection and graphing system. It is a new set of skills that you have to learn and a new set of tools that you have to adopt in order to implement precision teaching. But Liz and I can both attest to it is absolutely worth it to dive into those things. And that's what we do at Octave is teach you how to do that. And then these last few, Precision teaching is also not only for a certain set of skills, depending on who I'm talking to, someone will say, isn't that just for academics? Or isn't that just for learners with disabilities? And it absolutely is not any one of those. Precision teaching is effective across all of these domains. So what we did in preparation to publish this article was we did what's called a concept analysis. And in a concept analysis, you look at a specific concept, which in this case was precision teaching, and you outline what the critical features are, and then you also outline what are the variable features. So critical features are the things that must be in place in order for that concept to be that concept. So I outlined the critical features as 
the things that must be in place in order for whatever you're doing to be called precision teaching. Now, variable features are all of those other features that exist in some way, but it can vary how it's done. So for example, let's take dimensional qualities. I said you could use any dimensional feature of behavior to do precision teaching. So if you happen to have a chart where you're charting frequency or you're charting latency, some charts will have latency on them. Some charts will have dur duration. Some will have frequencies. But as long as you have a dimensional quality, it's still precision teaching. The, type, the specific type of dimensional quality can vary in different examples of precision teaching. So then degree of restriction. We talked about kind of the range of, of restriction in instructional arrangements. So some instructional arrangements are controlled entirely by the teacher, the pacing, the delivery, the number of trials. And there's other forms of instructional arrangements that are really free operant. So precision teachers tend to lean towards more free operant arrangements, but that doesn't mean that if you're doing discrete trials, you can't also be implementing precision teaching. Then we have type of intervention. This one's so important to put in here because precision teaching really is not an intervention in itself. It is a system of measurement and data analysis that wraps around any type of intervention. So this could work with one-on-one -on -one instruction. You could implement precision teaching in a classroom or in a small group. Another one is the data collector. There was a big movement in precision teaching for a few years to really emphasize learners self-charting. And I still think that's a great thing to do, but it's not the only way to do it. So there are all kinds of arrangements where the data collector or the charter might shift. So sometimes it's the learner can take data themselves. Sometimes the teacher is going to be taking data. Sometimes an outside observer is going to be taking data while you're instructing. Um, that is a variable feature and you can vary across that and still be doing precision teaching effectively. Skipping over to the measurement recurrence. Precision teaching can be implemented when you're collecting data all day, every day, um, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case in order for you to be an effective precision teacher. So some of us only get the opportunity to work with our learners once or twice a week, and there's still good ways to do that in the precision teaching model. So that recurrence, how often you're measuring can vary and you can still be doing precision teaching. Although I would emphasize if you can collect data and make decisions daily. Then the decision maker can change. So who's looking at the chart and making decisions? Just like the data collector, you can have learners involved in this process. You can have um, various levels of staff involved in this process. One thing that Liz and I both love about precision teaching and the way that we like to implement it is that it really empowers um, RBTs or registered behavior technicians to be a part of the decision-making process. Um, BCBAs can also be a part of the decision-making process. Teachers can look at the data and make decisions. Administrators can look at data and make decisions. There's all kinds of ways to do this, and you can still be doing precision teaching effectively across all these different ways of doing it. Then we have the counting time. One big misconception that we hear time and time again is that precision teaching is all about one minute timings. And I'll tell you that comes from just a history of the one minute timing was kind of a big discovery in the precision teaching world. So some of our early articles are written about hey, guess how great one minute timings are? And they can be, but that doesn't mean that you can't also collect data in five second timings or collect data for an entire session with a learner or across the entire day. This chart is designed so that you, you can do anything for from short amounts of seconds all the way down to an entire 16 hour or 24 hour day. Now the domain can vary too and that's really important. So precision teaching, most of the things you're going to read about in precision teaching until very recently have really emphasized classroom behaviors. That's, there's been a lot of implementation in classrooms and in learning centers. So you probably have been exposed to some of that, but that's just one domain in which precision teaching can be effective. So you can implement precision teaching in applied behavior analytic um, approaches to autism treatment. You can implement precision teaching in um, life coaching, job coaching, 
coaching athletes. So we've seen it in business and even in self-management. And the behavior pinpointed can also vary. So you've probably seen some examples of precision teaching where the behavior being pinpointed is a very finite, small um, component or tool skill. And that is something we like to do is target tool skills that underlie larger um, repertoires. But the behavior pinpointed can totally vary. So you can be charting an entire repertoire in one chart, or you can be charting um, composite skills in one chart, or just be focusing on tool skills and component skills. So that's your expanded version of the really short truncated version you got a couple years ago. And this is something that we teach our learners how to engage and talk about precision teaching. So if you want to come learn more about how to be a precision teacher, how to talk about precision teaching, what literature to cite, um, come join us at Octave Innovation. Liz Lefebvre and I have started a venture to train the world to learn about precision teaching and implement it in their work.